Okay, hey everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, today on this, it's not a podcast. Today on, in the video, we have uh, Brian Ang. Brian Ang, uh, he runs uh, Hyperfame Digital. Basically, it's a marketing agency. They specialize in like service uh, local businesses as well as do a lot of high ticket info webinar stuff. Uh, I think right now they're doing around three to 400K per month on webinars. And uh, if anybody knows Singapore, it's like incredibly difficult and competitive market just because uh, the population is very small. And so the ad spend and the CPM is very high. So we want to learn from the best uh, guy who knows how to craft high ticket offers and make it very, very sexy. Okay. So uh, Brian, please do introduce yourself. Uh, tell us more about yourself, what you do and stuff. Yep. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, is this live like on stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's live. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So my name is Brian. I just trying to introduce. Um, so basically we run an agency in Singapore. Uh, Half of our clients are local service from beauty and interior design or home remodeling in some other countries. And, uh, and half of our clients are info product. And I meant like usually the info product side. Um, and we do webinars in Singapore. And like, like what Jonathan said, uh, webinars in Singapore are quite difficult because there are two things, right? One is our CPM is very high and the population base is very, very small. So if you're doing a niche-based webinar, um, majority of the time it's not going to work because the population is too small for you to run any ads to. Right, you need to use uh, various uh, traditional methods or I would say uh, direct mail, direct marketing method as well. The second thing is really about um, the skepticism in Singaporeans. Right? In Asian countries, actually, I think especially Singapore, it is very, very difficult to actually sell. Um, and what do I mean by that is that we are webinar. If I put my webinars to the US, I think it's going to convert at maybe around 10, 20% conversion rate. But in Singapore, uh, getting a 10% conversion rate live is actually extremely impressive because of all the questions that people ask you um, and having so many competitors in a small little uh, market, right? Um, so mainly uh, what my agency do is really um, uh, we craft great webinars and offers and actually we run YouTube and Facebook ads for them to, uh, for Singapore itself. And it uh in 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 offers itself and and webinars itself um what i realized is that um there are few there are many ways besides the perfect webinar to do it, right and really it down 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 to how do you do your messaging and your offer and if your messaging and offer in talking to the right prospect is there you're 100 percent gonna earn a lot of money right and that's all you really really need in um i think even in e-com in any type of business that's all you really need right yeah so um Offer like to me is one of the most crucial and uh, for us, for our agency, we do offers every sing for every single businesses and actually that's a very taxing process because even for local businesses, we craft offers for them and that's because we want to over deliver. We want our clients to actually get great results using a funnel using um, when, and doing marketing as well. Uh, and um, I would say offer has many, many different parts and it's not only what you throw into a product stack, right? Uh, and if you throw in stuff into a product stack, that is not an offer most of the time. Uh, even be for econ, for, for info, or be whatever, it is not an offer unless uh, it fulfills some of the criteria that, um, uh, like a few of the things, a few different things, like messaging and stuff like that, right? And I'll actually be sharing with you more about that uh, uh, later, right? <laughs> or you gotta let me share now. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I guess, Brian, explain to us what, what is offer creation? What is this? <laughs> uh, offer creation is just, uh, for me, it's all about eliminating objections and getting the client or the customer that reads or see your video, read your sales letter to feel, to really relate to your pain and the problem that you portray, right? And, and when they have that pain, um, usually they will take action to solve that pain and uh, you need them to be aware. So there are a few stages in the awareness scale, right? So your offer must be very, very specific to which part of the awareness scale that you are actually targeting on. And eliminating an objection is the biggest obstacle to actually getting to the sale. So if your offer does not help people in two things, which is convenience, right? If your offer is not convenient enough, people will not buy. There's too many, like if for example, you are buying insurance, insurance, right? Life insurance. If the insurance agent is going to tell you, you need to sign this, you need to send uh, this form here and there like five, ten times, right? Uh, before they even close you, right? Most likely over time, you will not take up this offer with them because it will be too uh, tedious for you to even get a life insurance. But if the insurance agent can actually help you do all of that without you actually lifting a finger, I will buy from the insurance agent, no matter how much it costs, right? 
because the convenience is the biggest factor in why you buy things as well. And I think the second one is um, eliminating three types of rejection, uh, meaning uh, every time when you create an offer, there's always a big, big promise, right? Uh, what, what is this, when you buy this thing, what is it going to do for you? So uh, the first thing that I would think of and anybody would think of when you read the page or sales letter is that, is it really going to achieve the results when I buy this? Is it like, am I going to achieve the result when I buy this? Do you want to earn more money? You want to trade better? You want to get um, healthier? You want to lose weight? You can get dating apps, get girls on Tinder or whatnot. And even like e -com, you can make uh, for beauty products. For any type of uh, things that actually solve a problem, right? They want to know how exactly does it solve a problem and is it true? So uh, I think a lot of people use social proof, right? But I like to combine social proof uh, with the other objections as well, which is what I call internal and external objections. Uh, internal is basically uh, mindset issues, right? Means they either feel that, hey, I'm not good enough to do this. Uh, I don't have time to do this, etc., etc. External is more like resources. It's like time, uh, money. I don't have enough money and stuff like that. So if you can able to put that into perspective of the customer, like for example, uh, this is mainly for info, right? For example, is that uh, if I buy this course, um, I will get able to get X amount of money. So you have a client, like for example, one of my clients have a, has a testimonial that say, I fail my business. But after going to a trading course, I was able to achieve financial freedom, right? And, and you want that type of testimonials you need to make your offer very, very sexy and to make it converting very well. And internal, internal is really about their own mindset issue. Meaning, because I, I thought I wasn't good enough to actually speak on video, to actually do ads, whatever it may be. Any type of objections that you have in your industry. If you are able to identify, clearly identify and understand your audience, the specific objections they have, you put them in your testimonial, you'll see your sales page, order form, everything, right? Um, go up higher by like maybe 2 to 5%. And that's really what we want to do, right? Um, so besides the big promise and the objections, there are a few other things in the component of the offer, right? And a lot of times people, like I said before, uh, things offer is really a stack of random products together. It is not a stack of random products. If you have a stack of random products, it's not going to sell. It's like, for example, I sell you email marketing, then I, I sell you other random Facebook ads or whatnot. It's not going to do so much effort unless you can bridge the gap there. How is it going to help them? So um, I learned from one of my mentors on actually how to do a great offer stack. And that great offer stack all comes down to solving additional problems for the clients and actually giving them convenience to do certain things. An example is one of, uh, a good example is when you're selling uh, maybe a book, or, uh, how to actually author a book, the type of course, the type of maybe even a, uh, uh, a video series, right? Um, or even like a email course or whatever. Example of the big promise is actually how do I get to maybe um, be a best-selling author in the US, right? Um, my, I only need one additional product to make them say yes. And that product can be, you know that um, in the US, out of maybe like 380, I don't know the exact number, 380 bookstores in the world, in the US, uh, there's only 12 stores that you need to be in. And 80% of the time, people who actually put their books in the 12 stores become best sellers, right? Would you like to know what the 12 store is? And if you buy my course today, I'll give you that 12 stores. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, instantly, I just bridge the gap. Say, if you buy this book, this whole course will actually make you um, get to the end goal much faster, much more convenient, and you don't need to try and error so much as well, right? So I just tell you, and, and all that piece of paper does is only give you the 12 names and the 12 address. It doesn't really give you anything. There's no information. The only information um, they have is that this 12 stores, very highly likely that you're going to get the best seller list. And this was used by one of, uh, uh, I think, Mark Joyner in Singapore to actually sell his, I think, $10,000 course. And that was a very, very effective way to create a very irresistible offer. And um, for webinars, um, the whole webinar itself is also an offer itself. And the comes, there are other things that actually comes into play, la, which is uh, what I call uh, your story and your purpose, right? Um, and usually when you have, okay, when you start a business or whatnot, most entrepreneurs have a mission and a purpose to doing things. Uh, and but most of the time they don't say it, or they don't advertise it. Mm. And actually, that's the when you market, right? You don't have a purpose. Your advertising sometimes becomes bland, or unless you are very type of like super direct response. I say I claim, I claim, I claim. Then that's different. But if you want to actually be mission based, um, people actually follow story and mission very very well. So your offer needs to actually include that as well. So a lot of times when you do videos, when we do um, uh, webinars, um, the main 
problem is that people don't have a reason to buy into you, not into your offer, buy into you as a person. And you want to give them that reason. Like for example, follow a bigger vision, right? For example, the reason why people buy Apple and stuff like that is really because of the bigger vision. And you want to portray that in your closing as well to make the offer really, really irresistible because they want to be following a person that uh, walks the talk and actually has um, a bigger vision than, than what he is right now. And when you do that, um, the offer becomes irresistible. And most of the time when you talk to business owners, you talk to uh, even e-com people, uh, they don't really use the, the, the mission a lot or their purpose. They write it in their about uh, page. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, they don't really use it. Lah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, but you, if you can actually portray the thing in your videos, um, your offer actually becomes a reason for people to buy things. And they will actually support you and they buy into your brand. Then they become uh, very, um, like you create a cult indirectly. And that's what you want to do with an offer as well. You want to create like a, like a group of people and you want to disqualify people from those. Like people who don't really uh, follow your vision and your mission are not really your dream customers as well. So it really does two things. And... <clears throat> What's the other, the other, let me think, the other few things, hold on. I think, I think and, the, and the most important part that actually people actually miss out, I think when you're running ads for anything is really your prospect. Uh, as much cliche as it sounds, people say target audience, etc, etc, etc. But really target audience is either the thing that actually make or break your advertising uh, and your offers. It really makes or break. Um, and I think uh, you and I have discussed quite a, a bit about that is that, for example, it's like um, you, don't want your, you don't want clients that are dropshippers, right? But if you are doing a case study on zero to one million, no matter how, uh, unless you disqualify them or say a different thing, like I only want to work with brands or only brands can help or in a way that your mission is to help brands scale, right? Or some, in some other way, your messaging is very, very clear that uh, Josh Rippers are not my clients. There is, Josh Rippers will still apply no matter what. So your messaging, um, your prospect, understanding your prospect needs to be super clear to the point that you really know um, how they think. Right. It's not really um, what they do, how old are they, what, what jobs they do. It's really how they think. Right. If they, uh, if like, for example, if a 200k per month e-com guy is not going to waste his time watching through a one and a half hour webinar, he's most likely going to hire somebody to do the work for him. Right. All you need to do is show results. And that's basically um, your offer. Right. And as well as like really understanding your prospect to a point that you can actually know how they think and when they actually look at you as a, a, like a service provider or like you want to buy something from you, you exactly know how to actually present the offer in the right way. Right? Presentation is also the key. So uh, there are ways of presentation, long sales page, e-com, uh, be it uh, e-com uh, webinars, long webinars, sh short VSL, case studies, uh, or even just email uh, offer, right? There are a lot of different ways. So the best way is actually test all, but obviously there are some things that you shouldn't test depending on the prospect. Uh, and I just state one of them. If, if you are targeting only super high level people, don't waste their time. Just give them upfront what you're going to do, what's your results and your case studies. If you are targeting more towards the lower end of the market, you need a lot more mindset. And that's the reason why webinars are one hour and a half, two hours, three hours. It's because uh, most of the time it's not your offer that doesn't convert, but you cannot convert them due to their own mindset. And that's really stopping them. And if you realize people who start in MMO niche, uh, make money online niches, and people who actually buy a lot of, uh, I think, beginner type of courses, they have a problem, right? <laughs> Their problem is they jump around a lot in different places. And I think, I believe, I, I, when I started, I also do that. And that is really because of your mindset. So as long as you can have a very strong purpose and you can actually be more confident and be the leader through, in the webinar itself, you are able to convert very well. And if you realize people who sell very well actually does that superbly well. If you go and uh, go and see model after all of them, right? Understood. So I mean, I just repeat back to you and uh, you talk quite a lot, right? So it's like uh, <laughs> take take a product, take uh, and then position it as offer, right? First, understand, eliminate the objections. What's it gonna do for you? And understand uh, the number one desired result that product gets for you, right? Then afterwards, you go and stack your offer. Uh, then if you can do an emotional pull, a tie in so that uh, some like branding, mission, bigger vision sort of thing, and then you become like not a commodity. Is, is that correct? Right. Okay. So every, every offer technically, as long as your person is uh, unique to yourself. Um, uh, people always say like uh, everything is a commodity, right? Especially even in e-com. I feel that every time you sell something, it's like the same. Mm. Um, however, you can always change things up through your offer, right? Um, I think a very, very good example is that 
uh, that I learned from one of my mentors, I think Stephen Larson, is that actually in e-com, actually is the best place to create irresistible offers because you have the most leeway because everybody's else selling physical products, right? They're not telling a story. They might be, or they are not um, throwing in things that actually help them solve more problems. And I think in Amazon, be it any platforms that you sell in, this can be applied. Uh, uh, offer is just really about solving different problems, having the presentation in a, in a good way, uh, having follow-up, maybe upsell or whatnot. And if you're adding everything as, um, add all these things together, you already have a business itself that is going to really potentially earn you at least seven figures, right? So one example is uh, that he gave was Skipping Rope, right? Uh, in Amazon, I think Skipping Rope, you can buy anywhere from maybe $2 and above. Huh? Like the quality, I think nobody really cares unless you are Skipping Rope enthusiast. Nobody really cares what quality of Skipping Rope right? uh, Unless you want to buy metal Skipping Rope or something that can swing very fast. Um, but what he gave the example is that between each, right? Why is there a price difference still? And who, and as a consumer, what are you going really truly going to buy? Are you going to buy the cheaper Skipping Rope? Are you going to buy the most expensive? Or where are you going to be? And in business, right, there's only two ways to be good in business. Either be the cheapest or be the most expensive, right? And you always try to aim to be the most expensive. But how do you be the most expensive? And that's with better offers. If not, if you sell the same thing, exact same thing from China, it's not going to cut it. And people are going to say that you're a scam. Why is this guy selling $2? Why are you selling chow? So how do you package it so that uh, it makes sense for your margins and it still makes sense for you to earn more money? Um, a good way uh, is to package in uh, intangible products, meaning info products. And like for example, people who want to buy skipping ropes, what type of prospect are they? Are they? Do they want to lose weight? Do they want to get fitter? Are they only taking this up because of COVID? Is it female and stuff like that, right? Really understand your audience. And when you understand, you can actually create an a additional product, an info product that actually can help them. For example, if that uh, person I want to take out skipping rope as a boxer, right? Then I will sell boxing related info product together with it. Maybe I teach them how to do rope work, how to maximize their rope work with skipping, mm -hmm. how to actually uh, do shadow, whatever shadow boxing, eat nutritional for, 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 for the game, forever, whatever, for, for rounds and whatnot, or how to make mental clarity to do all that. And when you do that, you can sell at higher price than any of your competitors. But if you realize that uh, if you're selling info, right, you have, like what you say, 100% margins. Mm -hmm. You duplicate it across it. And people cannot technically mimic after you because the information you really know truly your audience, who are they? And you know how to talk to them. And when you can do that, present in an offer in, a, in, in your prospect eyes, give them, uh, for, uh, help them solve more problems and they will actually um, buy from you. And that's really uh, how you can create offers in the e-com space as well. Uh, and one more thing is that actually putting a, a Facebook group is one of the best ways to actually create a community. Uh, I think I saw on Amazon, a person is selling maybe $12 skipping rope, have a community of skipping rope people, I think. I don't know what to call them. <laughs> okay. They just skip, uh, basically. Yeah, yeah. They will share their ideas on how to skip better and whatnot, or yeah. different ways of skipping. And that was interesting. Uh. But then a lot of people uh, in the comments, I just said, like about the community, have a community of, to keep me going to, to lose weight and whatnot. Then that's a very brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. intangibly, the value of your thing actually increases. Like people will perceive the, the perceived value of the product actually increases, even though a Facebook group product. doesn't cost anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and it helps you upsell. Like if you've got any products, info product, any other nutritional products, supplements, uh, mm. very easy for you to sell and it's off the Amazon platform. Mm. You, don't, you, don't, you don't incur any charges from there. So yeah, it's a win-win situation. So offer is really about creative ways to actually get people to see your perceived value as higher than your competitor or higher than your cost and um, shifting the 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 house yeah the buying remorse like you taking out a credit card is one of the most difficult thing to do online right now right mm. to take out credit card and put in your details so uh you want to make give them a reason to really take it out and pay you um, and having that reason is uh, instead of actually shopping around so when you hit when you know you hit the right offer when they can do that they really take out a credit card and only buy from you you have done the right job and to the right prospect. Okay. Okay. I understand. There's something called the product stack or offer stack, right? Yeah. And uh, a lot of people in the ClickFunnels community might know what it is. But can you explain what uh, offer stack actually is? Because you're just saying one product. So how is it a stack? Yeah. Okay. So uh, product stack is just, uh, to put it very simply, it's just multiple products, um, like a bundle, right? Um, mm -hmm. But you clearly state what a bundle is. But a product stack is like what I said before, it's not like, you train random products, it will make sense. You need to be very, very deliberate. Meaning like, um, 
if you want to be a like for example you want to be a bowler you bo- you want to learn bowling you go to Amazon you buy a bowling ball or buy a glove you will go and buy other things if you don't have them so like a very deliberate one is that a bowler bowling starting pack like 101 right? bowling 101 I give you all the things that you need and I give you a textbook of bowling 101 for dummies <laughs> so then I know my prospect very well and this is a, it's a stack so I give you a bowling ball a glove maybe some shoes some socks and a, a textbook right of how to actually bowl well uh, then that's a, a good stack because you solve their main problem which is the big problem which is uh, their interest are how to get started in bowling that's the main problem they don't know how or they don't know what to buy so you give them everything they need and actually teach them how to actually bowl better so you solve all their issues and that's a very very good product stack right uh, a very bad product stack is you throwing random products and thinking that you entice people to buy um I saw one thing, but uh, I'm not sure if it's, uh, can, can I say it here? But like, you, you know the weighted blankets that people sell, right? Uh, what's that for? Weighted blankets? Uh, to sleep better. To sleep better. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah weighted blankets, right? Then uh, I think I saw one of my friends uh, in US posted. Uh, see, the, is it, does it make sense that a fee, uh, children's weighted blanket, uh, the, the best like frequently bought with uh, is a vibrator. The next frequently bought with. They're like, what the f- <laughs> you get I mean? like, that's a, that's, yeah. a, that's a damn bad product stack because it doesn't make sense. Right? Like, why would a kid buy, like, would mom buy that for a kid or the parents buy it for a kid? That doesn't yeah. make sense. So they need to yeah. really vet through what they are putting in the frequently or actually filter out kids and adults. Huh? Filter out kids and adults. So then um, you really need to like, really understand uh, buying process, how they think, and where they're coming from as well. And the main problem, uh, so the biggest problem is really understanding the true pain and problem that it really, really have. And um, uh, one way that actually I love doing, um, I think a lot of people don't really like this because uh, as marketers, right? And or even as e-com, we like to stay in the back end. We just like, hey, yeah. just run ads and like, <laughs> just let it run. Uh, but most of the time, the biggest uh, feedback and the biggest optimization clues come from your customers by calling them. Like literally just calling, picking out just the phone. Just on the phone. Yeah, just ask them why you never buy, why you buy, why you buy this. Just really understanding them. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a level, right? Um, and when you can do that, like just let's just say when you're starting out, that's the best way to actually get an irresistible offer. Because uh, I did that for myself for webinars and whatnot. You just literally call everybody and ask them why they didn't buy. Mm. And you get a better offer the next time you do. And you convert at a higher percentage. And that's what you should do. And sometimes when you call them for people that abandon the cart, they might buy from you because they didn't know about certain things that you didn't tell them on your landing yeah. page or whatnot. So it's also a follow-up uh, sales process. That's very really smart. Like what, what, what did you learn from the inside when you called them? Like what they're like uh, scared to, <laughs> like scared what, no guarantees or what, what's the... Uh, okay, so uh, I think one of the examples is that I, I always use is like uh, we had a video workshop uh, that we were selling uh, viral videos to people, right? To uh, business owners. So I was thinking like everybody should understand that viral videos help in all industries. I assume. <laughs> so when they come back to me Common or when set, I call yeah. them, right? They tell me, hey, does it uh, uh, help in the oil and gas industry? Hey, does it help in the cleaning industry? Hey, does it help in all the random industry? Then I know that I didn't clearly let them know that it helps every industry. I didn't show them proof that it helps. It works yeah. in every industry, right? Mm-hmm. So what I did is just one that small tweak and then in conversion just straight away increase, uh, like to 10%. Just straight away from like nice. maybe 2 3% just shoot up, right? And um, really understanding your audience, right? So another thing is also um, people are scared to do videos, like. People hate doing videos. Like I don't want to be the face of the video. I don't want to be the face of my brand. Uh, I don't want to have. I don't know what to say on a video, and all these objections come up. Um, yep. So, yep. and a good offer set that we do is that I refer you. I refer you my talents. I give you a list of my talents that I use, and for hundred dollars, maybe for four hours, you can use them to say anything that you want. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Then you don't need to be yeah. in, a, in a. They can do the whole video. Then you just direct them. So that's yeah. another way that you can actually uh, absorb it. And the last but not least is actually like for example video editing. Right. internal belief that I cannot edit well, I'm a technical idiot, mm. whatever that may be. Yeah. So I just tell you that um, you can use your phone to edit. It's very simple. <laughs> right. As a, for one as example, yeah. or you can actually hire people to do it for you. And then if you can actually teach them actually how to actually hire and vet through and get maybe BAs, they actually can do that for them for a quite cheap price. They'll be more than actually happy to buy whatever that you, you actually offer. Yeah. So um, I hate sales. And the reason why is that because when I started... Um, I wasn't very outgoing or intro, uh, very introverted, very, not very extroverted. Uh, and when I go to, like, I think one of my partners say when I went to a first, one of my sales meeting face-to-face, I was shaking. 
I was literally shaking because the guy very big, like very big insurance agency right, in Singapore. Yeah, and I shaking. Yeah. And I present. I like. I like. Either either I cold or I too nervous. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I just fumble all the place, right? Um, but I, I learned to love it because, like, in a sense, I really get to understand the industry in a deeper level. Mm. I get to understand what problems they are facing and how to help them on a, a bigger scale. And that's the the the, the area that I'm in the frame that I'm going in as well. So when I really ask questions, I really deeply want to understand. It's not really I want to sell more. I really understand why, why is this, does this not help you? Uh, because I think this is a very good product, right? As long as you have a good product or a good offer, uh, you want your best to actually convert well. And mm-hmm. unless, then sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the market will tell you that your offer is not good enough. And that's when you know that uh, it's in your head. Like, you will have that, uh, I would say ego that say like, hey, my offer is the best. But actually, no, your offer like maybe not that good. Uh, one of yeah. the worst if you ever. Then you really have the market feedback. And then Gary Vee says it very well, like, Execute first, then let the market tell you whether you're right or you're wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the feedback will actually optimize them. So everybody wanna keep a home run in the first try, and that's not possible. Unless you've been doing business or have a very, very a lot of experience. The home run only happens when you keep tweaking it until you hit the optimization level. I think you do CRO uh, a lot, uh, conversion rate optimization for a lot of e-com store and you know and understand it best. It's not I make one landing page, then suddenly <laughs> have 10% conversion, no, no such thing. But like slowly, you see the data, you tick, 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 tick. And the same, same is for offers, right? Yeah. Um, every time you offer something, uh, you are keep tweaking. Be it you're doing a webinar, you're doing it on a sales call one-on-one or an e-com store, you always are tweaking it. And um, your customer feedback is the most important thing to actually adapt or tweak. Right? And context is also very important to adapt. Context. Uh, an offer is without, an uh, offer is only good when the context is right. When the contact is wrong, um, basically it's useless. And what do I mean by that is that for example, COVID, right? Mm. is a good context to use against or use uh, for an a, a argument or a pain or whatever. But if you don't use it right, uh, basically you're just killing yourself. And people won't see it as a reason, right? For example, if you're selling random stuff, then you say COVID, that's why you need to buy. You're not going to cut it. But you're going to say like maybe uh, people who actually like, uh, maybe like webcam, uh, keyboards, whatnot, or like, like mic. Uh, maybe it's gonna help you because they say like with COVID, like everybody gonna work from home soon. You better order right now. The scarcity very very strong. <laughs> they only have fifty pieces left. Like they yeah. freaking buy it. They don't care what the price it is. Nowhere else can buy. No Walmart, wherever, all also out. They only your store have. They buy from you. Right. Yeah. So using it the context to your advantage as well. Uh, and uh, I think people don't really see, uh people do that subconsciously, but don't really know how to utilize it in a very powerful sense. Okay, you know you mentioned tweak the offer and stuff and optimize. For a bit e-com straightforward, right? Like the product page, the landing page, just <laughs> add a couple of lines, add photos, <laughs> and start run traffic. Okay, right. But then for you, like this webinar, right? You webinar high ticket stuff. So do you like re-record everything, change everything, and then just A/B split test, or like how do you normally? Um. So you, I usually do live. Um. I will listen. Okay, so I don't really do the webinars uh, for my client. I, I do the webinars for my client, but they don't really follow word by word for I say. Nobody follow, does it, yep. right? And um, a webinar, there's a lot of variables, meaning the ability to speak well, the ability to position yourself as an expert, the ability to uh, handle objections live as well. There's a lot of these problems. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say to do live always first, rather than do automated first, right? Because mm-hmm. once you hit live, you hit like maybe 10, 20%, you just take the video, just put into automation and you know you work for at least three months. Yep. That, yep. That's a key. Okay. Then I think is what do you exactly test? Um, actually, it's very simple. Uh, like, uh, actually, it's easier than, I, I feel it's easier than going in blind. The data is what the clients ask you. Right? So when you're doing a live, there is a live feedback. For example, now when we are Zoom, uh, there's a chat box. So yep. when every time I stay after like the first, maybe the first three content or one, one part of the content, they have a lot of random questions about that that part of the thing, you know it that didn't do a good job or you actually overshare too much information. Okay. Yeah. Wh- so, wh- why overshare? What's... <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, I think one of my sales mentors tell me, tell, told me this. Like, um, it is when you, you are doing a disservice to people when you give them actionable steps because you're giving them an illusion that they can do it themselves. And when they do it themselves, they fail. I mean, it's a give and take, right? So, uh, I would say some people don't believe in this, some people believe in this, but what I take from this is that when you give people too much actionable step, especially when you make it too easy for people, right? People think yeah. that I don't need you, uh, I can buy, I can do myself. Hmm. Yeah. So and, and and in sales, that's not what you want. 
uh, you want to work with them for a long term to actually ensure their success and you know that there are a lot of pitfalls that you cannot 100% say in a three hours or one and a half hour type of webinar. So you want them to, uh, you need to give them uh, information that is good, but not 100% actionable in a sense. Uh, they can work on it, but it's not good. They know that they, they will need your help to actually either accelerate them or actually give them uh, to avoid all the things that actually have suffered. Lah. So that, that's a key. And by the question they ask, you will know whether are they, uh, either you overshare or undershare, right? Uh, when you overshare, people will say, um, they will thank you, thank you, thank you, and they don't buy. They say, this is great, this is awesome, oh, this is fantastic, but they don't buy. Yeah. Then you know that you have shared too much. <laughs> uh, <for people. laughs> okay. That's very okay. simple, right? That, 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 that variable is very simple. But when you, uh, how to know whether, um, are you saying in the right frame? Are you pre-framing correctly? Are you um, saying the right analogy so that people understand? Are you saying simply, sim in simple format so that people don't uh, get confused by the jargon? Uh, that is um, by actually analyzing after the recording or being as a, I will go in to the whole webinar or have somebody go in the webinar to sit through the whole webinar. And if you are, and depending on the prospect, right? Oh, I'm going to e-com workshop, like all the, the site own dropshipping store, whatever. You are targeting people who are laymen who just want to make money online. So I just get any of my layman friends or I get my staff who doesn't know a lot about e-com to sit in that and tell me the feedback. And then and, and the feedback usually are quite good because it's quite legit. They have legitimate concerns when they buy. Yeah. Uh, legitimate concerns like this guy actually is not telling me the truth or whatever, or it's a scam, right? And then you can really answer that. Um, and really look through at points uh, uh, during the whole presentation. Um, are you really creating, setting the offer up for people to buy? And um, same like a landing page, right? It follows a, freak, a, a strict format, uh. Like you need to introduce yourself, say like how at your accolades, right? How good you are and stuff like that. Then after that, you go into the problem people are facing. Maybe it's COVID, maybe it's recession, maybe it's whatever. And after that, you, you say like how can e-commerce, dropshipping, or this system help you, right? You always go through that process. But what people don't realize is that um, they 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 cut short the the relationship between the people. Is that they assume like for COVID, I think everybody know COVID, right? Uh, everybody's suffering and then you just jump to the next slide and you, that's what you shouldn't do because um, you're assuming that everybody's the same as you everybody's the same as like a person that you imagine in your head so rather than doing that uh, I like uh, to do something to help uh, people do uh, to relate to everybody it's just basically asking a right asking a question and this is a trick that anybody can use now. Uh, so like remember COVID actually has uh, impacted our, uh, our life right but I never say how it impacted our lives. But they will think how it impacted their lives in their head. So then the pain comes, right? It's a very like rhetorical question. So uh, that's the reason why if you go through a lot of webinars and seminars, they ask so many questions. A yes or no question. They will ask, they say, say, say something, say yes or no. Then you just type yes or no. And it's not for no reason. It is a psych psychological thing to get you closer to the sale. And they say like, the more yeses you say, basically uh, you close more. Lah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the assumption is the most deadly part of the webinar because a lot of people assume that they are the same. A lot of people assume they are type of customers, and and you want to assume rather you want to ask questions and and handle on the spot. And the ability to handle is one of the another most important things because if some guy is gonna ask you that this, how can you be so sure your voice in my industry, and your answer is like, uh, I'm not very sure. You gonna or like uh, you like stammer or like you yeah. kind of like hesitate, right? Um, the whole vibe changes. Oh, and everybody okay. knows that they will call <laughs> you out. They start, everybody will start calling you out. Right? And that's not what you want to do. And your whole chat will be become toxic or not if you are in a, in a sense. Uh. So what you want to do is that you want to handle the question very, very well. And the same thing I teach people how to handle is ask them back a question. How will you not know you work in the industry? Oh, shit. <laughs> Just a pretty stupid way of it. It's a very simple way of it. Oh, no, no, in the industry. So like, my question to you is that have all your competitors not use this to actually accelerate their business? Example, one of the, then they, okay, they cannot say yes or no. Then they think, right? They say, uh, yeah, actually some of my competitors use. Then you, you have an angle to go in. It's like sales. Yeah, but if they don't use? They don't use. <laughs> they say, then why? Don't use, uh, then you see this, how I shift. Uh. Then you are the first one to use, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so you, win, you, you win either way. Yeah, you know yeah, how yeah. to shift, right? At least you give yourself, yourself time to actually think about it and actually how to handle the situation. So, um, 
I, I'll say these are all sales. <laughs> webinar is pure sales. <laughs> webinar is 100% pure sales. So a good or bad webinar is basically dependent on sales psychology and tactics as well. And you will know whether the person doing well or not. And sales, uh, for me, I don't, uh, webinar is the best way because it's one to many. And one to many, you control because you are the expert. You are the, the leader. If you cannot show that you are the leader, you cannot, people will not follow you, especially in uncertain times like this. So in COVID situation, people go on to webinars, it's not to buy stuff to make money online. On the contrary, it's to buy into a person that can lead them out of this situation. <laughs> and that's a very profound uh, thing because people buy things because of other people and people buy things because of maybe bigger mission and vision, right? And uh, webinars is one of the best ways to actually do that. And um, if you are not solid, right? means like if you cannot sell very solidly or cannot speak very uh, eloquently and very like confidently, yep. uh, don't use a webinar to sell because it will only play in your... your it won't help you. <laughs> it yeah, will yeah. destroy you <laughs> very, very badly. Um, so rather than that, doing that, maybe do a recorded video or do a, a long sales letter to book a call or whatnot. And that will be 10 times better for you. Right. Um, so play to your strengths uh, for offer. So like if you, besides seeing how you can present an offer to the right audience, you also need to see how you can present an offer with your strengths and only do things in your favor. Uh. Don't, don't make it difficult for yourself to sell things. Like for example, if uh, like one of my, my mom is currently making masks, right? And they ask me, hey, can I make e com store? I say, no, why we want to make e com store? Why you want to run ads? Why you want to spend $49, $29 on Shopify store to, for traf- uh, a domain that nobody goes to? Why does people uh-huh. on like a freaking like platform and then sell and sell uh, maybe um, just she basically right now she has 59 sales uh, maybe a, a week, right? Uh-huh. Just WhatsApping people saying, hey, you want to buy? Or like, then can you refer me people to want to buy? Then every time people wear the mask, they refer more people to them. They don't even need a store until they yeah. hit like maybe 100 orders a day or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. So really play against your strength. My, my mom is not technically savvy. That's what I need to create, right? But she doesn't really need to be technically savvy to actually sell the mask. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of people have that uh thing that I am not good enough. Uh, I'm not good in this. Don't look in the. Don't look in the direction. Don't look at one line. Like for example, uh, the way that your competitor is selling sometimes is not the best way for you to sell. And yeah. sometimes when you can find a better way for you to sell your present your offer, uh, you might actually hit a gold mine that nobody actually touched on. Yeah, because it's untapped. It's untapped. Yeah, uh. totally untapped. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I mean, considering like you do a lot of high ticket webinar stuff, right? Have you seen uh, anybody use VSL for e com before? I, I use it. I did. Okay. <laughs> oh, you, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Come, come. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, okay, so uh, VSL for e com, I, I did before. Um, but we are changing that because a lot of objections I cannot handle. Uh, okay, so I, I started with, I, I, I help uh, skincare, natural skincare store owner create a webinar that sells her product at $400. This is US or? No, Singapore. What? And it's very, very difficult. <laughs> what? Okay. It's, Singapore, yeah. it's very, okay. very difficult. But we somehow are able to get 2x, 2x return back. And that's not a lifetime value. La. So it means every, every $1 you put in, we get $2 back. Because uh, she's very difficult for her to actually get it for a Shopify store to convert. Okay. It's not because um, it's not possible. It's rather because of her. High to uh, high ticket, right? No, not high ticket. It's like she don't have enough money for ad spend. Sorry, what? Yeah, don't have enough money for ad spend. Okay. Yeah, she don't have like she 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 wants to spend very very little money, right? So she yeah. cannot scale it well, and she has, um, she basically has been doing business like. In flea markets for the past, I think five years. Okay. She hasn't been scaling, right? So what we try to do for her is to create an offer that she can actually scale comfortably online because every time there's a direct, uh, after she do a webinar. And she speaks very well. So after she yeah. do the direct webinar, she get 2x return. And the person buy more at one go. And even if they don't buy, the people love the whole thing. They will talk about her brand and yeah. buy maybe one small product from the store. So it's a win-win, no matter what. Mm. Um, and how you want to go about actually uh, selling for e-commerce product uh, is one thing. Uh, I learned this from Alex Becker. Because uh, he, okay. um, he sold Spectre, right? Like last yeah, time. yeah, correct, correct. Yes. Like brain so, right? yeah, uh, yeah. so he basically get a doctor in. Let's talk about the nootropics benefit and why you should buy for maybe a prospect entrepreneur, right? Uh, entrepreneur should buy this because it helps you in clarity, like yada, yada, yada. Just yeah. give you all the examples and the pain and the problem that you have and tell you how this will help you as a solution and say, you want to buy? You buy this a starter pack. It's very good for you and you can actually 
uh, within maybe the next 30 days, you can actually um, get clarity and actually improve your performance by 30 to 50%. Yeah, bye. Yeah, because you're a doctor. <laughs> yeah, they go through a one and a half hour pitch by a doctor telling them how good is it and say like, no, it's the best for clarity. You need this to actually scale business. Whether, whether, yada, yada, yada. And then I give you a very usable offer and someone is a price slash, right? Discounted offer. Discounted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, they give you a buy. Um, so what we did for her is that we created an offer for a foundational pack for skincare, meaning toner, uh, sunscreen, uh, moisturizer, all this, all the. Oh, so these were all individual products that you just yeah. combine. They just like, yeah. nice. Okay, so it's like a, like a bundle. It's almost, a, but yeah, yeah. It's okay. just a bundle, like. It's just three hundred ninety nine dollar okay. bundle, right? Okay, um, okay. And uh, we put in a consultation because that's what she do for our clients already. Right, she consult with them one on one. Yeah, right? like. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, it's actually a very very good offer. Um, it but the only problem with that is that the objections are very, very a lot because when people buy skincare products, right? They want to know exact ingredients. They want to know how it can help my face. Is my face suitable for this? Then how many face types are there? Then like very hard to handle the objection. They're like very annoying. Like can't, they, they know there's a consultation already. Yes. But then they have all these problems. So I changed the whole format right now. I changed the whole format. Instead of selling like a bundle of products, right? So for, for skincare, I, uh, for actually a beauty industry, I won't, I won't suggest you to do a webinar directly selling a bundle of products. But maybe I do a webinar to uh, either sell a mini course or a uh, a consultation. So what I do is I package a course and a consultation together. Plus the physical product. No, no physical. Oh, it's just. Uh, and what okay. happens in a consultation is upsell to physical. Okay. <laughs> oh, you okay, got that's really complicated. Problem, problem, then I upsell, right? <laughs> okay. uh, and the reason yeah. for that is because uh, uh, I I want I the objection can be handled because I I will know them one on one, but I cannot handle yeah. objection one too many. Yep. It's too too many for me to handle. Yep. But if I sell a course on how to take care of your skin what you should eat, et cetera, et cetera. People will, will buy that. Yep. Yeah. So, so then it, I changed the way of the process a bit to actually accelerate that. Uh, but for really for other, um, other niches, uh, it is much, much easier. Supplements is really easy uh, because everything you come and go, you put together, it's like a, you like add on things. Uh, then people yep. will buy together or you buy in a bundle more and to last longer and save money. Then people will buy. Mm. Uh, for other niches, I haven't tried before. Um, but a webinar is a very good way to actually self-liquidate into your list. And by self-liquidate meaning, uh, instead of actually running products directly and you only have a little bit of margin, if you use a webinar to sell info product and getting them to become your cult, to get them to buy your brand, your stuff and everything, uh, it is a much, uh, I would say a different strategy that nobody is using right now. Um, and it's something that I would say you can test and try because um, People buy people, lah. Huh? Like, like yeah, that's very, very yeah. obvious. Uh. People then trust people, see, yeah. You can see all the YouTubers that they just do content, 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 and suddenly they have a T-shirt brand. Yeah. Always sold out for some yeah. reason, right? Uh, so that that's a very, very strong uh, reason why actually you should uh, do that. And uh, you build goodwill first because a webinar is always giving value first, right? Not necessarily giving any hundred percent actionable steps, but giving value knowledge. And when you do that, people actually recommend you uh, a lot. I recommend you like, hey, this guy is actually quite legit. Um, the things I do, I, I might never buy, but the guy might talk about you because of the story that you said. Yep. Certain yep. point that you, you teach them and they say, hey, I learned from this guy. You can go and see his webinar. And then you get word of mouth recommendation as well uh, mm. without even selling your products. And um, I think uh, this is a really like guerrilla tactic that you can use in businesses to, to differentiate yourself. And you can sell the exact same product as your competitor, but a person will still buy from you because you have given technically knowledge and value to them and actually how to use the product. Itself, yeah, understood. Understood. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's like a front end offer, uh, yeah. to the back to the ecom. <laughs> to the, yeah. yeah, it's it just it's makes complicated to set up, like just in logistics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get, it, I get it. But like it's the same thing. Like uh, what's it called the the full on um, opt in page to webinar jam or demo or whatever. Same thing. Uh, yeah. Track? Um, you can do yeah, full on webinar jam, Zoom, whatever, or okay. uh, you can do an automated one if it's actually working to sell like a $37 product, a VSL, not really yep. a webinar. Yep. And, and that might work, that will work as well. You don't need to do a long ass webinar. No, don't, if you're selling something like, it's like uh, example, like one of my friends, I think uh, sells for one of the company, gun insurance. Gun insurance. Damn difficult to sell gun insurance, right? What the heck? <laughs> On Facebook somewhere, right? right? Example. Uh. Yeah, super oh, difficult shit, because gun is like firearm, then you can't sell, right? So he, and, he and he's to able to. Roundabout way on doing it, right? Sell a random small little <laughs> product and then like, yeah. But they make a lot of money. So um, 
my 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 thing is that before you do all the fancy stuff, right? Get the boring stuff down first. Like for example, uh, like if your main source of money is really on e-com, get that really scaled to the po- point that you cannot scale, and like you keep you cover the market to the point that nobody else is buying, and your CPM is increasing. No matter what you do, nothing changes, right? And that's yeah. when you actually change your acquisition strategy. Yeah. Uh, don't change it right now because uh, it's gonna only lose your focus, and you're not gonna get. It's like eighty twenty rule, right? Whatever you focus on, sometimes the twenty percent that you focus on actually get. So see exactly your business, where are you getting most of your money from, go and pump all your effort and time into that and, then, and make that the biggest before you do other things. Uh, yeah, don't, don't do it because uh, I said that it's, it's a good strategy. Yeah, <laughs> focus on the business and what is actually giving you money. Yep, yep. Okay, I understand. Okay, so I mean, enough of me talking. <laughs> uh, we have two people in the room. <laughs> uh, so the free flow Q&A. Yeah, so I mean, Anders, uh, Danny. Uh, anything yeah. you want to ask, uh, Danny, just to give context, uh, Brian runs a big agency in Singapore, high ticket info plus a lot of local service business and stuff. Yeah. So uh, feel free. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Um, you touched base on like, um, I think webinar is a good way to... Danny, sorry, your audio is a bit soft, I think. Oh, is it? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you mentioned that webinar is a good uh, funnel to attract more customers and give them more value. Um, how, how do you market that webinar and get people to sign up and, and go to that webinar. Okay. Um, so uh, I think in, in all things, it's either solving a problem or actually having a big promise, right? Um, so it depends on the niche that you're doing. Uh, for example, I think, I think the current common ones are like, hey, uh, make more money. Uh, okay. Get maybe chicks or whatnot. And the last one is maybe like eat healthily, lose weight, right? These are the three big niches that I think Russell Brands always say. Um, but for other specific prompts, like uh, maybe you can share with me what what you, are you what products are you selling? Uh, I sell like print on demand custom canvases, so I don't think we okay. could attract webinars for. Okay, so um, you need to think out of the box, right? So print on demand canvases. Um, maybe what is your dream customer? What's your customer that are actually buying from? Like parents with um, kids from like three to nine. Okay, three to nine, right? So maybe there are a few problems that you can attract them with. So developmental uh, progress in a kid, right? How to actually get your kid to uh, maybe um, learn faster in school. That's one. But your products don't really uh, complement that. So another way is actually memories, right? So how do you okay. how to make um, your children growing up, eh, your, your, child's, child, your child's childhood experience wonderful, right? I give you three ways to actually do that. Then I start, I start, I, I, Subtly, I sell my print-on-demand products to actually print canvases and things to put at home. As they make the very home a very environment, uh, homely factor. And they remember about, uh, even when they're growing up, they remember about you. They actually develop filial piety and all that kind of thing. So it's really about actually crafting it in complements to what you sell. And how do you actually sell your current products? So uh, for me, it's actually amplifying it. So you must think of it in the dream customer sense. Why are they buying your print on demand canvases, why are they buying your uh, t shirts or whatnot? And why are they printing on it, right? If they are printing their uh, anniversary faces and all that, then memories and really un, um, family is very important to them. And any topic about memories, family, or experience, and uh, they, they want because they're already buying the stuff is like in, align, in alignment with your products. And you can easily upsell that product and get affiliates or get partners in to sell other products in as well. And basically, you build. You build a brand or based on family rather based on print on demand. If you understand what I mean. Yeah, that makes that totally makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a good that's a really good way to approach it. Never really thought about those angles before. Yeah. So, so uh, even it. even for I would say your product, even product page, you can actually add that in as well. So that um you, un- you when you really understand your audience, your when you can add that story element or that test right testimonial in, uh you will convert very well. Okay. So having a story, I guess, is um, really key because you mentioned having like a mission statement, like a purpose um, behind your brand. Um, I think that's really important too, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, What about for like, um, I guess, kind of like SaaS products where, you know, you could help, you know, Facebook advertisers get more row ads or something like that. Um, Yeah, I'm going to start like working with... uh, like a big company or like a, not a big company, but a SaaS company to help um, grow their um, 
yeah, just help them with Facebook ads. But I think it'll then you want to give us is, perspective on what the software does, uh, like you know. Yeah. So the yeah. So software does like uh, it's called Connect IO. Um, I think it it oh, helps with like we'll call, uh, we'll call the crit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna be like just partnering up with that guy, just helping him with Facebook ads. So trying to help him come up with new ideas, how know how to scale and, um, mm. yeah. I think a good uh, case study would be like Alex Becker, Tyros, and ClickFunnels. Um, the reason why they will be able to scale to eight figures, I think, I think Hyros haven't yet, uh, but they're soon to be because the way that they're acquiring customers are insane. Um, is that you you want to sell high ticket uh, because high ticket makes you have the margins to play bigger. And in high ticket, I I've seen a trend because like, I see a lot of people selling high tickets. Like maybe you sell six months at one go, or maybe one year at one go. And they bundle in different courses. And there's a reason why they bundle in courses because uh, the lack of information is uh, is what people think that they are not achieving certain results. Like remember, if you buy in ClickFunnels, if you don't have information on actually how to use it properly, you're not gonna stay more than one month because you think it's a waste of money, right? Yeah. So for example, if Connect IO is the Facebook um, interest finder, right? Finding right. maybe um, uh, more, uh, what's that called? Um, not known interest. Audiences. And, yeah, audiences, right? Yeah. Um, a good way maybe like uh, Welco can, I think, can just basically come up with a Facebook ads course and just give it for free, right? And it's of no cost to him anyways. <laughs> right? If you actually bundle that into, then he, if he sells in a webinar, 997 of the course, and I bundle, and I give you free Connect IO for maybe three months or four months, five months, basically it's paying for itself, huh? And uh, if you also get results very fast, because if your students actually get results from the course that you do, you can actually base it on because of the program that you actually give them. Hey, the, the software that actually help them, with, uh, that they use. Uh, I think a lot of people actually attribute maybe iron consulting, like for our ad expected, right? Uh, YouTube ads. But a lot of people say, oh, it's also because of high right? <laughs> that I know which ad to exactly scale and it makes it much easier. And you can just use that portion of that and you just put in. And that, that's a very good acquisition strategy because cash flow is most important in SaaS business. Right. Um, yeah. And if you've seen most, uh, I would say most of the direct marketing or marketers running a SaaS product, that's the way, um, the business model that I will go with. Run a webinar or run a, book, a call booking uh, sales one-on-one, right? Depending on whether he's better in one-to-many sales or you have a sales team doing one-on-one and get that sales team to sell very high ticket or bundle in even with viral, up viral or not. They have a suite of products. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, that's where I will actually uh, go towards. Um, but mainly um, software needs to be in a blue ocean. So it's either you craft a blue ocean for yourself. Um, you can easily craft that by creating courses to introduce people to, 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 to ads, Facebook ads, right? right. Uh, and uh, one way that you can do is also creating courses for like local businesses, like just giving free um, uh, bonus courses, then giving them the, the software. Because I don't think Connect IO is very expensive, right? No, I think it's only like 99. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I bought it before. Um, yeah. So actually just bundling different courses in like mini courses will be increase, will increase the conversion a lot. Um, another way um, that I've seen people do and I, I've been doing for one of my clients is uh, creating a self-liquidating offer, an e com funnel of sorts. Means you sell info, right. mini information. So instead of a cost uh, like this, right, you sell them in phases like this. So you sell them one, part one, part two, part three, part four. Uh, so meaning like uh, if you've seen a free plus shipping book funnel, right? Yeah. Um, uh, the offer is actually split into like maybe five different parts. So uh, uh, for Amal, his is $99. It is not really a very big sum. I will actually have a book or interview on the best, maybe top 30 interviews for Facebook ads. I, I just create a template or a book or a video, whatever. I just put, put in a train into like membership area. <laughs> I sell it for $7. I get okay. an entry, entry level. Uh, then the second one, maybe I sell uh, maybe a 97 course or even a $99 Connect IO. The third one, I add virus. Do you want to actually boost every every ad, give you three five more people? Do you want that? Then I sell a viral then add, put another co- another software in as well then you have a you have a funnel that actually helps you acquire things at a very efficient rate and okay. um, you can liquidate a lot of money through there because 
one customer might not only buy one and you have maybe, let's just say like average order value is $50. One person that goes through the funnel gives you $50. So yeah, up to $50 to spend. And or maybe, maybe even more if you bundle in more products in it. And people buy your first book are indoctrinated by the book. So the book is also a retargeting strategy or the, the courses are a retargeting strategy. Uh, so you kind of create like octopus type of feeling for people. Um, and actually a lot of people don't do this. Um, and this strategy is only used by people, I would say, uh, by people hitting at least seven figures because they have their, their back-end sales process down, down to the T. They know how to sell very well. They know how right. to, and Welco is one of them. They already have it down to the T. So acquisition, changing the acquisition strategy might be uh, good for him. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Very good tips. I appreciate it. No worries, man. Um, yeah, I have a question as well. Yeah. Um, so um, after this, I got uh, I got a bit pumped on on doing uh, digital products for my e-com store. Um, yeah, I mean it's like it's yeah, I can I can see how it increases the margins a lot. So um, it's something that I've thought about doing before too, but I've never really uh, gotten to it because it's it's like. Um, well, basically, my question is how how do you make info products um, at a budget and without uh, like without me having to go in front of a screen and and doing a course or something? Because I I've thought about doing. I feel like there's two types of info products. It's like PDFs and stuff, you know, in the in, in the written word, and then there is uh, videos, mainly in courses. Yeah. So I feel like courses have more value to people, but. Yeah, so yeah, I want to do both, but yeah, how do I do them on a budget? Um, PDFs and courses have a value, but the perceived value of video is obviously higher, but it's always about how you present and um, the offer, right? Um, so I need to ask, maybe what are you currently, what niche are you in and what are you selling? Yeah, so right now I'm in the uh, jewelry gift niche. So I'm trying different, um, yeah. Okay, it's basically... Yeah. My next question is like, do men buy or women buy? Um, it's the jewelry is for women, but it's uh, it can be both uh, genders who buy. You have a statistics that one buys more than the other. I don't actually. Okay. Not, 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 not. Okay, so um, I, I my first my first thing is that if I were you, I would actually go and do it because if I know it's the guy that's buying for the girlfriend or anniversary, I can create mm -hmm. a product very easily out of that. All right. <laughs> Uh, but if it's a if it's a mix mix um then you need to see maybe is it um you need to really clear be clear on because uh, I think the data already tell you maybe eighty percent of the people who buy it maybe are guys then you know mm -hmm. that uh, you're attracting guys to buy because of a certain uh, anniversary or make, making their girlfriend um, or or whatever like for a certain special occasion right then it's very very easy for you to come up with a PDF or, or whatnot yeah. um but if you say to have, make it a budget um. You will need to know what problems uh, you're solving after the jewelry, right? So, example, if some problems are maybe. Uh, Brian, uh, sorry, uh, it doesn't help if you see the store. Uh, if he's okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> and this, are you okay? You can say it, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, sure. Okay, I make you a host, you give. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yep. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, okay, so do, do I just uh, share it? Or? Yeah, share screen. You can, you can take over now. Yep. Okay, hold on. Uh, yeah, because think about it from Brian's perspective, he's thinking hypothetical now. I think if he sees the product, it's much easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so there is so many things. Do I just press desktop one or yeah? You, you, yeah, you press yeah, desktop one, yeah. Okay. There should be a share button. Uh, yeah, I just got to uh, allow Zoom. Uh, it says that I have to uh take down the take down Zoom, but I can I can okay, put wait. the link. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, you just give me the link. <laughs> never mind. Yeah. I'll show. You. I'll show. You. What's what's the URL? It's hold on. I'll send it. Um, I'll send it in the chat. Uh, there we go. So it's, it's basically what I'm trying to do is to I I want to test. I'm trying to to test different kinds of. Um, gifts 
Um, so yeah, it's it's still in the like early stages, but yeah, because uh, I I, um, I kind of want to get away from normal drop shipping because it's um, the shipping times are so long, and I, I feel like this if you if you can succeed with this, you know, you can you can sell people more stuff, and and they'll be happy with the shipping times because this ships from the U.S. So yeah, yeah. So um, I think this is very very similar to maybe Danny's uh, type of product. It's really um. For me, it's like um, it's in a gifting niche, and um, it really depends on where you're focusing on. So right now, I can see that there's nurses and there are um, gifts from guys to girls, right? Um, I would say to choose one specific one and go in first. Um, uh, if you want to create a digital product, cause you cannot. It's very hard for you to create a lot of digital product and test the offer like this. Rather, um, you need to see. Statistically, like for example, for her is better. Then I will focus on for her creating a digital product for her. And for her, usually, I would say ninety percent of the time, a guy will buy this for the wife or the girlfriend, or whatnot, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So I also have um, a nurse. If you if you see at the top. Yeah. Uh, that's the last thing I tried. Nurse gifts, because uh, I felt like it was more you know uh, in a niche is uh, maybe a bit easier to target. Um, I got a bit more success with it, but not, you know, nothing I'm happy with yet, but yeah. So I, I still have to test, uh, test various stuff, but nevertheless, this is for the, the long term, you know, um, okay. making digital products. Um, so I think for, for this niche, maybe I will not create like a video course or whatnot, cause uh, it's a very gifting niche, should, like there's not much problem, but rather helping them with the main thing that they're doing. Uh, and what yeah. I mean by that is that, for example, you're giving gifts, right? Uh, maybe to your wife. Then I'll say like, it's, it, maybe it's an anniversary. So I'll say maybe 101 date ideas to make her uh, feel like princess or whatnot. Right, right. And you don't really need a video for that. Uh, you just yeah. need date ideas and you can just get a VA or whatnot to script ideas on a yeah. YouTube video or whatnot and just freaking like put them there. Um And... uh. I would say for this niche, yeah, I think that would be a, a good thing to add in as an info, uh, it, be it PDFs or, or video. And mm, I would say you really need to study your audience a bit more because um, you're trying, you're testing things out. But uh, I did dropshipping for a while last time as well and I keep testing a lot of different things and trying to make it work. But what I realize yeah, yeah. is that sometimes is that because I don't understand the audience enough to make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the key point which is really going in depth and really uh, why do like in the US I don't really understand because I'm, I'm Asian right? and I, I'm, I'm living in Singapore I don't really understand why why would people buy like, this nurse necklace for people because I don't I won't, I'm a physiotherapist I won't buy a physiotherapist necklace I, I, even my friends won't buy it. I don't understand that reason so I really need to become them or really understand do enough research Yeah. Uh, so that the point that I really truly understand why are they buying this and yeah. how can I help them achieve it in a in a very very good way? Uh, I think for the nurse context, the reason why it, it did well is because of COVID situation, and you can actually, uh, I think you can actually add like every dollar you get goes to like a nurse foundation and, and all those things, right? But, um, yeah, I can't think of anything to throw in with the nurse one, um, because I don't know the real reason why people buy it. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah. But a very, very good way of actually creating info that I learned from people is actually getting uh, influencers to do it for you. Uh, getting micro influencers to do it for you. Ah. So if you share, um, like you give them the product to actually review, um, yeah. then they do a content and can, you can give them some content ideas they can do and say maybe if you actually help me do this, uh, maybe you can get maybe like, uh, I, I can I cut a deal or be whatever or pay you a bit here and there. I think they'll be more than willing to do so. Um, right. and, or be a be a spokesperson for your brand, uh, and uh, you need to sell them the dream, right? You cannot, you cannot, you need to really sell them the dream to make it cheap for you, in a sense. Because if you don't sell them, they say anything's not going to be very big and whatnot. They won't really care and do it for you. Uh, I see. Yeah. So that that's one way to actually go about getting um, cheap. I would say uh, affordable uh, ways to create info products. Right. All right. Thank you. Um, can I just ask how? Uh, do you have any 
types of, I guess, formulas or, or, or tips for how to best present the, the digital products? Present. Um, yeah, like, yeah, well, making the right angle or... I, I guess I guess what Anders is asking is how to structure it. Is that right, yeah. Anders? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. How how do you structure okay, like this is my notes for it just now, but like how do you structure an offer? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> um okay, so after you get it, I think the first thing is that what what actually actually you're offering, which is the products that be like the necklace or the PDF together, right? And then the next yeah. thing is really um for me is really um the pain and the problem meaning um if you see a lot of, uh pain and problem i think for ecom is not really dive deep into uh, and that's one thing that you can use emo people buy based on emotion the reason why they're buying a gift to their their wife is purely because they want to make her happy or they did something wrong and want to uh, want to save themselves right so you need to play on those emotions in copy uh, and i don't think a lot of people does this um so like you you like in the copy you're saying like uh, to my wife, I made a first date and everything. It's, it's great. And, uh, but rather, a very good copy, right, is like, I think one of the fashion brands that I cannot remember, they describe their clothing as like seasons. I think uh, they have very good copy. I can't remember the exact name. I need to go and check that. Um, but one, one way, for example, how I structure the whole copy at the first is talk about a story and a pain and problem together. Meaning, um, I would say, imagine this, if they actually receive this product in their hand, and the first thing they do is to skill and join and jump around and the room like a little kid when you were, when you first got on the first date with her together again. And it paints the picture in a hit. <laughs> it just freaking paints a big picture in a hit of uh, what you want to make them feel, right? And then you can say like, uh, or, or if you're coming into another angle like solving problems for guys is that, uh, imagine your wife not angry with you ever again, right? <laughs> if there's only guys buying. So you really, that's why I say you really need to truly understand uh, where your audience is coming from. Uh, and then you can write and paint as many pictures as you want. And, and when you can do that, uh, people buy immediately because you totally understand them. You, it relates to them what they want to do. Uh, so that's the first thing, the pain and the problem, right? And the second right. thing is um, uh, also including uh, your how to use it. I think uh, how, how it wears. I think for e uh, no, nobody, I think Jonathan does this for his clients, but uh, like he does um, showing how to use it, how when people wear maybe a different skin type, what, what does it look like? So a lot of people don't actually do that because they, they just assume people know they put in a neck, like they, they know what it is. But yeah. imagine that you're in a store, right? Uh, mm -hmm. When a salesperson comes out to you, you will try it first. But that's because your skin type is different. Maybe your, your clothing is different. And then they can actually truly understand how does it fit their skin type as well. Mm -hmm. So then you have different uh, uh, things to actually uh, to, to settle in terms of how to wear, how does it look and stuff like that. And what does it go great with, right? So then you add more value in it. And, and the last thing is really your mission and purpose, right? Uh, it doesn't need to be a very long story about why you do this and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You can say like, uh, like if you can be in a bro sense of view as well. Like, hey, I, I have a wife and totally understand how it feels. So I've been, I reckon my brain will actually find a perfect gift. And most of the time, the perfect gift is a customized gift. Right? And then you can explain why, right? Yeah. Because it actually shows thought, concern. And that's my mission to actually help men in the world to give their wife a perfect gift. And it's just basically one simple, like one short paragraph. And people right. are like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So then I'll actually paint from uh, your uh, story, uh, maybe functionality, logical, logical things that you actually include in. And the last one is really your purpose, right? And your mission in the store or why you're doing this, why you're selling this, right? Um, and people don't actually say why they are selling things. People just, uh, a lot of drug shippers do it like, yeah, selling things because I want to make money. Uh, and that's the main goal, right? But um, you want to have, bigger reason to that. And when you have that, authenticity in and emotional comes into very strong play. Mm. And and you really you really connect with your audience. And the last thing is your testimonials. Mm. Uh, Amazon testimonials are one of the best testimonials ever, right? Some of the testimonials. I, I saw one weighted blanket testimonial. It's so funny. They say when I fart, the fart stays in till morning. And I can I can fart bomb my, my wife or my girlfriend. <laughs> That's like freaking retarded. But that 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 whole Re uh, reviews or testimonials actually state that the weighted blanket is so good that it, that it retains like heat or whatnot underneath it or retains whatever underneath it underneath it but in a, in a joking sense right so you want to find um, funny testimonials you want to find relatable testimonials and last but not least you want to find testimonials that um, 
states the pain and problem that your prospect has involved. Uh, like, for example, it's like, um, right now you say my girlfriends love it. It's very beautiful. I love it, right? You might not know that this testimonial doesn't work because like 90% of the guy uh, might be a guy buying, right? Yeah. And so the, the main concern they have is that whether their wife will love it. Say, yeah. I, I took a leap and I said, for example, my one of the testimonials I can write. Uh, I can, you can craft testimonials as well. So you can say like, um, I didn't know what to get on her for, for her birthday. And I actually got this on a, a last, uh, in, in one week ago. Uh, what, I mean, a few days before her birthday. And I, I prayed to God that actually it worked. Everything worked out. And <laughs> actually she loved it. So it was a, I was very lucky that she actually she loved it. And then this is one of the best gifts that she sent to her. And by doing that, actually people say like, this is a good, great idea for a gift. <laughs> yeah, right. Indirectly, yeah. It, plant, it just plants in their head, right? Uh, so you want, you want testimonials like that to actually um, resolve objections. And, and everything yeah. um, that I state for a webinar is actually fundamental in conversion as well. Hmm. And if you can get a video, you can get uh, people saying that, um, can get, uh, or even a picture of the guy, uh, a face, right? You need a face to actually make it more realistic. Of right. them. So this person said this, right? Uh, you will actually increase as well. And all this actually plays a part <laughs> um, in conversion rate optimization. And that whole CRO is also kind of like an offer itself. Right. And you right. can do that. Um, you, you need to continue the process throughout the, the even in the, um, what's it called? Checkout page. Yeah. So your checkout page must have the three most powerful testimonials ever about your safety. Meaning this is one of the most trustworthy store that I buy. And people are like, hey, this trustworthy right because at a checkout page they take a credit card they think why is this a scam why is this a drop shipping store yeah you can observe that situation as well then basically they'll buy from you mm. so you must think of uh, uh you'll be adding very analytical and see each process what are they doing uh, how do they think yeah. um, and actually right. use the testimonial to your advantage yeah right all right awesome thank you no worries. Uh, I, I one more thing is that um Testimonials for retargeting, uh, a lot of people use this, right? But right. they use, uh, uh, I would say, crappy testimonials or corrected testimonials. Don't use that. Use uh, reviews by people, uh, legitimate reviews that actually say something bad, then something good, right? Um, or like um, like real people actually reviewing it. Right? It cannot be always good. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I think of it from a customer point of view. Uh, because people are actually desensitized by, by that kind of thing. What? Uh, people are actually kind of desensitized by having everything is great, right? Then it, like, you become skeptical of your store, right? Why is everything good? <laughs> Cannot be everything is great, right? Yeah, right. So, uh, a, lot of, a lot of factors to actually see for an offer itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, Ken. Uh, right, I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, Danny, Anders, any last question? No, I think I'm good. Uh, okay. I think I, there was a lot of value in it and I appreciate your time. Thanks, Ken, yeah. Brian, I, uh, there's just like six or seven in the Facebook group. I rapid fire. Okay. You just whack. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just whack. Okay. So Paul asks agency question. If you start an agency running paid ads for small local businesses, which you do, what would be the steps would you take? Choose one niche, have one irresistible offer and run the ads. You will get a lot of clients. And what about irresistible offer for agency is very simple. Uh, everybody's doing retainer, you don't do retainer, do pay per lead. Everybody's doing pay per lead, you don't do pay per lead, you do retainer. And you just change the way that you offer things, you'll be able to close. Uh, just need to give different reasoning, right? And a reasonable offer for agency, it's problem and pain as well. So for us, like for example, interior design, there's a problem in uh, the platforms. A lot of people in interior design use platforms, but platforms gives you shared leads. Unless your sales is got light, you cannot close shared leads because one guy is has at least 10 interior design firms talking to them. <laughs> right. yeah. um, so that, that's one way that we actually produce an offer. Um, and offer in a, like context is important, especially now for paid uh, agencies, right? Is COVID situation. So your purpose and everything is the same thing, right? Your, your pain point, your prospect, the purpose and everything must be there. Uh, I did a, a mistake last time is to run ads to everybody. Uh, don't do that. I advise you against that. Do ads, paid ads to one specific niche and uh, like for example, if you're targeting insurance agents, do only that, right? And get that offer refined along the way with whatever I shared today. Meaning talking to them, really understanding industry and see exactly how much they're willing to pay. What is a good offer that can, they can, um, they're willing to take. So um, what I do uh, right now, instead of actually charging a, a retainer, last time also, 
for somehow my partners are very good in sales. They are able to charge local businesses uh, $1,800 per month without ad spend, with additional $2,000 in ad spend, and an additional 10% revenue share. And that's almost close to impossible to close. <laughs> I have no idea how the hell they close, but they have closed like 10 clients based on this. But after that, we realized that the, this offer is very difficult. Like new salespeople can't close this. Yeah. So we changed the offer to exactly the same uh, price point that they give us, but in a different presentation, right? So now I changed to, I set up your whole funnel for $8,000. But every appointment that you get, I get $60 to $80, depending on the industry. But when you calculate, and That's I don't pay for ad spend, right? But when you calculate everything, actually they pay me more. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. actually they, they seem they, they don't pay me more because it's based yeah. on performance. So it's really crafting the offer that, that suits your industry, that destroys entirely your competition, I would say, and uh, in, a, in a blue ocean, right? So for example, uh, one way I'm doing in blue ocean is maybe uh, you can do e- uh, e-com ads, but YouTube ads. And all the e-com guys will come to you, uh, especially big guys, because they may, might not be running YouTube ads. And that's a very simple way to acquire customers or YouTube ads for local businesses. Right? That's a very simple. It's just the blue ocean and traffic source. Just change the traffic source, change the niche. Yeah, so really need to figure out what is the one focus that you want, what niche you focus, and what um, can you offer them that is not... Facebook ads is too easy to offer. Any Tom, Nick, and Harry can offer Facebook ads. But how do you make it not easy, like build a mode around a business that is an irresistible offer and nobody can copy you, right? That's the key. Uh, and a very, very good advice is that for us, we do Facebook ads last time, eh, now as well, but we do prepaid customers, meaning we do e-com, certain e-com base, right? Uh, only when we do make it sure that like the customer, our clients get paid appointments online without talking to kind clients, right? A lot of people say prepay, but they need to have a call and say they get a credit card. But what we do is that they don't even talk to the customer online, they just buy online. And then people buy from us because it's convenient for them, they don't need to do so much calling. And then it, we craft a new niche out ourselves in that niche, uh, a new offer, an e-visible as well. And, and that's really how we're going to do it. Okay, can. Right, I thought it'd be faster. <laughs> okay, uh, question two. Well, Paul, I got a lot of questions. Uh, can you outline the funnel you implement ads and landing pages to land your first, first one to three clients from nothing? Uh, I won't do a funnel for first one to three clients. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I won't, I won't advise you to do. Um, basically, outreach, 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 until you get one client, two clients, three clients. Um, because you, if you do an ad and funnel for an industry that you don't know about, you're just basically wasting money. You need to talk to people to actually know the industry, especially for agency. Uh, and I would highly recommend you not to do, but if you want to do it, it's basically just an application. Uh, I would say a sales page or application page, a long sales copy or be it a VSL to an application page, to a booking page, to a thank you page. And that's all you do. But in between, there are a lot of uh, things that I cannot really explain right now. There are a lot of pre-frames that you need to do to actually convert. Uh, that's why I, I, you really, really, really need to know what your audience is. Uh, next question of Paul is what courses did you take to learn how to craft the high tech offers just keep trying like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's, there's no okay there, there, copywriting courses are the best way to actually do uh, offers I'll be very frank because copywriters um, have to write words to actually convert people without even meeting them right mm-hmm. so they need to do tons of research so what I realized that um, offer, the offer kings are really great copywriters um, that, that you see like ClickBank, right? How the hell do you know that one ClickBank product can sell so well? You don't. You just do lots of tons of research. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's really how to craft a good offer. Um, and the basis of uh, crafting a good offer is, the, is found fundamental, right? If, if you know a client good enough, anything you sell can be a good offer as long as you know how to position it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the key. So uh, research is the it's the worst, I would say the most tedious part of any business, but it's also the most important part of the business. Okay, okay. I'll skip some of Paul's questions. <laughs> I'll just go to Alan. Okay, uh, what's the main difference between your opinion between someone who's able to be successful in this business versus someone who can't reach the next level? Uh, you mean in like webinars or in agency? Right? Uh, okay, I'll go. I think internet marketing. <laughs> oh, internet marketing, okay. Yeah, uh, I think so. I would say uh, growth, uh, optimization, right? Um, you need to be a high performer in, in business, right? In, in, in entrepreneurship. Because uh, if you try one thing and you fail, most of the time, the first thing you try always fail, I would say. I, I think 90% of them. Uh, and you give up, 
then you won't succeed. La. And basically, the, you just keep trying until you succeed to a point, right? It bound to be shitty days and failure. So for me, the number one factor is really mindset and how you take failure uh, as a learning lesson or how you take failure as like, like devastating failure. Right? And, mm. and you will never reach the, the point where you want to be. Um, and you can see based on successful entrepreneurs what, what they actually, uh, how they find their mind, what they do, and actually how many times they fail as well. How, how do you know when to like quit? It's like, I, I guess like, is this, this is like drop shippers. Uh, you know, they, they think they have the winning product and everyone like keeps trying and trying and trying. They lose money. But like, how do you so, know when it's like time to stop? When you don't know what the hell you're doing, right? Uh, that's not right. Uh, example is that I, I put drop shipping as like gambling. So example, uh, you're gambling when you're trying to find a winning, winning product. Right. And a lot of people gamble. So you need to have, even if you're gambling, right? Like Steve and Evan have a have system to do that. So basically, they have a system of high winning products. Uh, they don't waste their time finding them. They have a like whole team doing that, right? And they have yeah. whole team following the framework. And then you can do that. But for actually guess and checking, finding winning products, it is not very viable in today's day and age. So rather than doing that, um, I will. That's why I quit. I, I was doing that for a, part, for a while. Then I'm thinking like, this is retarded. <laughs> <laughs> and after a while, like, no, don't do this, right? Rather, um, really, um, I would say find a reason why. Uh, you want to improve in it. Like there's there's a reason why that you are failing in finding the winning product. There's one reason that, and you know the reason like like you have gut feeling telling you that uh, this is the winning product. Then that, this that's gambling, right? But you have a gut feeling that actually there's something missing in my maybe my skills, my marketing that actually I need to learn to actually really identify or create a winning product. And that's when right. I will go and learn about creating winning product. I won't do the same thing over and over again because that's insanity, right? Mm-hmm. But rather you need to see hey, what's wrong with what I'm doing right now. Or what's wrong with like what Guru is teaching right now to me? Are they doing it in the first place? Um, is our brands doing it in the first place? No. So why are they doing it differently? And what can I learn from them? So a lot of people don't see it this way. A lot of people just try and try, um, execute right. Uh, but reflection is needed. Um, so you know when to actually stop doing certain things. And best thing is that you get a mentor right to actually ask questions. Uh, yeah. So maybe like you can ask like. <laughs> I think Jonathan, like, why, hey, why, hey, why hey, do you hey. stop? Yeah, this, is, this is your, this is your. No, but like, you can ask you, right? I, uh, for me, it's yeah. like I don't know when to stop, and um, when you feel sh- like sh- like crap, like, in a sense, you you should you should really reflect because if you're spending your own money. Uh, you won't feel very well to it. So I I want to spend it in a very smart way. I don't spend it gambling, uh, and and uh, even in trading, right? I give a rare example. Facebook ads like trading. For you, would you rather? Uh, but trading people don't make gambling decision. But they do like in terms of when they are emotional, right? They want to earn more money, right? then they yeah. and make trades and, and burst their freaking account. But if you follow the system, right? <laughs> Basically, you won't really go anywhere wrong. Uh, you might lose money, but you won't lose a lot. But you, in the long run, you earn more. So really about fo- focusing and following the system, or you're doing different tactics that other people don't do in in different systems. Like for example, you take uh, in trading, right? Uh, they take different mathematics analogy or analysis into trading, and then they make money off it. So it's either or. You do the indirect, uh, follow a system to the point you refine it, meaning there are points of system that are, they are not refined yet, or uh, you know that it doesn't work for you. Uh, you are you don't have time, money, resources to do that thing. You try another method and you become better in a specific, uh, expertise in a specific thing. So uh, as I'm always become very good in offers, right? So anything you create is a very good offer. Then you can straight straight private label, create uh, like a brand like Snow, and then just scale to the moon. <laughs> So well, thank you can you. go either or, yeah. So for, um, you can compare Snow versus Steam and Evan, right? Steam and Evan create a dropshipping empire. Snow create a brand. Yeah. You follow one. Okay. And really uh, refine it to, to until perfection, then you know that uh, you, can, you can get it. Cool. Okay. That's great. That's great. Uh, Brian, last two questions. Uh, second last, how do you cultivate the mindset to be calm during bad days in Ad Manager? I am very <laughs> bad at this and I tend to panic. Uh. <laughs> if you are doing your own money, there's no way uh, because your your mind, your emotions in your in your cash in your bank account. Um, get someone else to manage your ads for you. You you re- you relieve all the stress that you have. Uh, because, yeah, but if you are at a stage where that money is a problem, uh, I would say get the money first. Um, find ways and means to earn first, uh, or or get as close as a mentor that you can to actually change your mindset. Uh, there's no there's no one answer to this, but yeah. Okay. Great. Last one. 
what is your day-to-day operation? I guess, what does your timetable look like? How do you structure your day and stuff? Uh, I'm a very messy person, so <laughs> yeah, ask me this question. Yeah. So randomly, I'll, I'll plan my week one week before. Uh, I'm not very high performance because I'm very lazy. Uh, but rather, what I do is uh, day-to-day is that um, I try to solve problems before they even come up. Uh, so I analyze my clients uh, with my team to actually solve problems. So bulk of my time is actually besides sales and onboarding clients, right, is uh, getting my team better to solve problems for me instead of me and um, foreseeing future business problems. And that's the, the only things I do. Uh, and I would say if you want to run a, uh, I'll be a lifestyle business or a, a very big empire, right? You need people to help you get there um, and you need good people. So it's either you train them from scratch to be that level or you hire great people and spend a lot of money to do that. So choose one. Um, and that's most of my day. I think if you see my notion calendar, it's like random. Every day is random. <laughs> yeah. But I focus on three things in a week and what I actually missed out on to actually reflect on that and actually what I did good last week. So always have wins. Ref- and uh, reflection is the biggest part of my day-to-day activities and every thinking about what wins I do, what went wrong and how I can be better and actually reading uh, reading or hearing the podcast is the biggest factor in getting ideas right, for me because I will have whatever one sentence might spin off to 10 different ideas that I can do for my business. So I give an example is that I, I, I was reading Justin Goff and Stefan Chojani's uh, 16 Way to Increase Your Conversion and they do info products. Right. I just use five of their ways on my clients and increase my, for local businesses, I increase their conversion by another 2%. Two percentage points. And, and, and those are, those are great. Right? So like you, you need to be constantly networking, constantly talking to new people, constantly um, uh, reading as well. Right? But to do that, you need a team to handle your day-to-day operations. So it's a chicken yeah. thing, right? So you need to solve your operations before you can be free to do all the other fun stuff as well. Okay, Ken. Thank you so much, Brian, for your time. Uh, where can, This is the time to plug your shit. Come on. <laughs> okay, so where, where can people find you? You can find me on Facebook. I just find my name, Brian Ang uh, Ziwei, uh, Chinese name. So Okay, uh, Ang is spelled A-N-G, guys. Yeah. So. <laughs> A-N-G, Z-H-I hyphen W-E-I. Yeah, so um, I think... You want to put your I, agency website? You want to tell us what the... Agency website, website uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a, I, I think you can just go, if you, if you want to find me, you can go hyperfamedigital.com. I think you'll redirect to my landing page. So, yeah. yeah I, I, I was only using the landing page for quite a while, but anything you can just find me on Facebook. That will be the easiest place to uh, connect with me and ask me any questions or, or yeah, look up for me if you anything. Yeah, just connect me on Facebook. I think that's the most active place I'm on right now. Okay. Okay, Ken. Thank you so much, Brian, for your time. Uh, we took one and a half hours of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Really. Th- thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you guys. Take care. See you, man. Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.